This conference will now be recorded. So, let us start off with the course overview. Uh, basically, the course is divided into two parts. One is UVM Essentials Training, which will go for around four to five weeks. And it is part of the VLSI Front End Training for Freshers program or the Functional Verification program. Uh, the next part of the course is UVM Advanced, which will go for around three to four weeks. Uh, it is for those enrolling for complete UVM course. Uh, during the training session, I mean, see, most of you have already attended very large and system very large courses. You know how the course goes. Uh, during the theory session, I'll be teaching them all the concepts, all the topics with detailed examples. Uh, you are not expected to do any labs or projects during these sessions. The intention of the lab sessions would be uh, the trainer providing guidance to the students. I mean, trainer will be guiding you in completing the course assignments, labs and projects. Uh, trainer will take specific assignment, student will be given time to complete the question. I mean, you all know how it works, right? Theory and lab sessions. Some basic guideline is uh, always be in sync with the trainer flow. Let's say whatever topic I'm teaching. I mean, we'll be moving quickly from one topic to other topic. Let's say today I may be talking about UVM testing architecture. Tomorrow I may talk about something called as objections. Next I may talk about reporting. Next time I may talk about factory. See, when I'm doing this, you should not be studying this one. You should be in sync with my flow, right? Only then you will be able to understand. Uh, having said that, we will give you sufficient time for you to do the things. Okay? We will not uh, do in very quick uh, time, okay? Uh, like, you know, recorded video will be shared. Uh, tool access will be provided and the course material will be provided. Okay. Uh, what is the prerequisite for this course? A good understanding of system wedlock for functional verification is, uh, is a prerequisite. If any of you are not comfortable with system wedlock, if you don't know how to use object oriented programming efficiently, and if you are not confident about setting up a basic test benches, do not enroll for UVM course because you will not be able to benefit out of the course. So what do I mean by this? If I give you a simple design, like asynchronous FIPO, mm -hmm. okay. If I ask you to set up a test page using system with lab, I mean, where, what do you have to do? You have to code the right interface, BFM and generator component, read interface, BFM and generator components, mm -hmm. and then the reference model and set up the entire test page. If you are not comfortable with this, if you think you don't know how to even start this project, if you don't know, if you don't have confidence that I can set up this kind of test range, do not enroll for UVM course. It will not be useful for you. Uh, so this is the agenda. Basically, as I said, UVM advanced goes, uh, course goes for close to nine weeks. It is divided into two parts. One is the basics, one is the essentials, one is advanced. During essentials, we learn everything that is required from a zero to two years experience perspective. Let's say if any of you are looking to learn UVM from a zero to two years of experience perspective, this would be the sufficient, these topics would be sufficient. Anything more than two years, then there will be some important topics like sequence library, different styles of sequence coding, advanced sequence methods, TLM 2.0, synchronization classes, policy classes. So there are a lot of such concepts which gets covered under the UVM advanced part. So this is what actually goes for initial four to five weeks. This is what goes for the later four weeks. Uh, the schedule. Basically, I don't think uh, there is a need to go through the individual weekly schedule. Uh, a 
talking about the training schedule uh, we will be having six days of training per week alternate day theory and labs i mean mostly timings our admin will inform you uh, so today if i cover specific theory topics the following day there will be the lab session so those all that information will be posted in the group so now first let us start off with understanding what is uvm uh, what exactly what is the why 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 do we require uvm okay so few questions we are going to ask first what is uvm uh, why uvm is required okay. how to use uvm these are the three questions we are going to ask first of all what is uvm uvm stands for universal verification methodology means the term universal means what across the world let's say someone is in usa someone is in europe someone in asia right they will be implementing various vlsa projects so there is a specific need to follow some uniform guidelines how the verification should be done how the test benches should be developed how the test case should be developed uh, how to uh, implement the scenario how to print the messages so that that is what we are calling as universally what guidelines to follow that's why it's called as universal verification methodology so methodology means what can someone tell me what do you understand from the term methodology same methodology what exactly methodology means process process it refers to the process that need to be followed so it basically tells universally that means across the world there are some process that need to be followed by everyone so that people know that everyone is in uniform everyone is in sync okay it's like simply telling like everyone measures the distance in kilometers right let's say if you go to some country they use some xyz which is not in sync with kilometer then it will be a problem right so it's like that is where that metric standards coming into picture the way we use metric standards for verification there is a standard called as uvm which everyone need to follow so that other people can understand your test page other people can understand your test case and how you are approaching the verification what is uvm basically it is a open source methodology what is meant by open source uh, these uvm sv files are openly available it means you don't need to pay any licensing fee users can view the code use the code without any licensing you don't need to purchase any license to use uvm and you can even open the code and see the things so for example if i go here i can go to source code this is the source code i developed this is the uvm code i am talking about okay this version of the source code is 1.2 see uvm got released in various versions uvm 1.1 1.1a 1.1b 1.1c 1.1d after that 1.2 there is no 1.1e so it got released in four versions here then the next release is 1.2 Okay. they may release uvm 2.0 also i mean there is a possibility but you see there is no big difference between these generations actually i mean whether you learn 1.1d or 1.2 it is not going to make a big difference okay. now what is there in this 1.2 version it is a set of pre implemented system deadlock files see this is a system deadlock file if i open this is a class which is already implemented and given to you if i open another class another file again it's a pre implemented class everything you see here these are all pre implemented classes so how many files will be there like that if i have to check how many files are there go here test it just do ls star star sv star so if i have to count the words 135 files are there 
So basically in UVM 1.2, the 1.2, totally 135 files are released. You can even check what are those files. These are the files. This is one file. This is another file. This is another file. Like that if you count, if you just go up, you will see totally 135 files. Okay. What is this 135 files have is, they, are, they have a lot of pre-implemented classes. pre-implemented classes and macros. Now, what is the use of this pre-implemented classes and macros? Let me explain you with a simple example. Uh, let's take a simple analogy. We are constructing a house. Assume you are constructing a house. house construction. There are two ways to do it. One is something called as prefabricated houses. One is construct, construction from scratch. Construction from scratch is what you do in system development. Prefabricated house is what you do in UVM. Okay. So, uh, why, I mean, how does the prefabricated houses work? I mean, we we are taking a hypothetical case, okay? Don't think that we are going to construct a house anything. We are just trying to understand how does UVM differ from SV. See, in prefabricated houses, what happens is, people know that a house will consist of a bedroom, kitchen, hall, bathroom, that's a dining area, different, different things, which constitutes a house. So there will be a company who provides, who provide all these things. You can customize, they will provide a B bedroom with customizable. You can tell this is the size I want, dimensions, various things, let's say flooring. You tell what you want, they'll give you that. Let's say the same company will provide you the kitchen requirement also. So on. So what they do, they prefabricate a bedroom kitchen, hall, bathroom, everything, all you have to do is, you have to just get those, uh, you have to go to them. They have a very generic structures. See, they can't think of your requirement, right? Let's say you may need a 15 by 12 bedroom. They cannot think that you will have this requirement. They will tell you that I can give you a bedroom, you tell me the requirements. They will create as per your requirement and they will give you. So you like that, all the houses, all, the, all the your requirements, they will be provided. Then what do you do? You integrate everything, then you make a house. This is how UVM works. So what is the advantage here? Now, what is the advantage in this process? Tell me. What is the advantage? Can, can someone tell me? With this approach, what is the advantage we are getting? We are actually reusing the things. It's already there. Basically, our house construction time is reduced significantly. Second, since the formula is already proven, I mean, see, this was used by many people. These pre-fabricated houses were constructed by many hundreds of people. So, formula is proven. So our house will be stable. Our house will be good. Because they know that bedroom will come good because they have already used this many places. Okay. What is the drawback? What is the negative drawback of this? Drawback you can't change the layout. Yeah, we may have to spend more money. Okay. Because you are, uh, these people will, when they provide this kind of services, they will charge you more money. Now let us come to the second aspect, construction from a scratch. In construction from scratch, what do you do? Everything you start from scratch. I mean, the bedroom, you develop from scratch. I mean, you build from 
start build starting from bricks. Kitchen again same thing build starting from bricks. So right, what is the drawback here? Sorry, advantage I would say. Cost reduction because you are doing everything yourself, the cost may be reduced. What is the drawback? Time taken is too much. It's more, lot more time taken. So, when you go to UVM, this is exactly the difference between SV and UVM. Now, in UVM, there is no bedroom, there is no kitchen, there is no hall. What is there in UVM is the test bench components. In this UVM, these components are replaced with the driver, monitor, uh, something called a sequencer, storage, scoreboard. All these components are coming as a pre-implemented structures. So what does UVM do? This driver comes as a pre-implemented structure in UVM. What do you mean by that is if I go to components, I can find UVM driver definition. This is like a company who builds the prefabricated houses, PF houses. I now go to the this house, this company, and I tell them that I want a driver which will support APP transactions. Then what they will do, they will customize this UVM driver. To, to work with APB transaction and to work as a APB driver and they will give me that, that driver. That will be called as APB driver. Let us say, now I wanted a monitor which will behave like a APB monitor. So, I'll, again I have this UVM monitor. Then what do I do? I use this. I customize it by using APB transaction and I create APB monitor and then I can use it. So all these things, whatever I require, they are all present here. They are all present in all these folders. Now you may say, why not place everything in one place? It is not correct, right? See, if you go to a shop, uh, do they mix everything in one place? No, right? They will keep plumbing related items in one place. They will keep cement and steel related items in one place. Okay, floor related in one place. Carpentry related in another place. You understand, right? Same way they have distributed. See, it is. it would have been possible to keep all these 135 files, whatever you see here, these files, into one folder itself. Do you think, which is better, tell me? Is it good to place all of them in one folder or distribute based on what they are supposed to do? So it is a good idea to distribute them. See something which are used for uh, TLM connections, they are kept in one folder. Something which is meant for implementing the register behavior kept in one place. So like that different different files are kept into different folders. Now, coming back to our discussion, uh, so I told you that if user want to develop a test page, let's say user wants to develop a test page, what all things are there in a test page? What all components will be there? Driver, which is nothing but the BFM. Tell me, what else do you see in a test page? Can someone tell me what are monitor. do you use? Monitor. Monitor. Yeah. Can someone tell me what else do you see? Scoreboard reference model. Scoreboard reference model. Okay, what else do you see? Coverage. Coverage. <laughs> Okay, what else do you see? Checker. What else do you see other than this? In interface. Okay, interface. Then 
assertions slave order so these are the things that make up a test page so here uh, in uvm when it uh, one important component will list here or let's generate it when you come to uvm bfm is called as writer whatever you call as bfm in system very long when you come to uvm you call the same thing as a driver monitor is called as monitor only there is no difference generator is called as sequencer what is on the left hand side is system very lock syntax what is there on the right hand side is the uvm syntax and uh, reference model is called as core code whatever you call as reference model in system very lock when you come to uvm you call it as core code coverage is same coverage is can be called as coverage also implemented as a subscriber fine cover let it be coverage only uh, checker is called as comparator so this is the generic naming convention you have to get used to this naming convention and what we used to call as transaction we call as item so what is there what is on the left hand side is system very lock what is there on the right hand side is the UVM. Okay. Now, how UVM helps is, I mean, why we use UVM is, most important thing is to reduce the construction. This is the most important thing. Because our projects are very time critical. Most of the projects are time critical. What is mean by time critical? If imagine a scenario where there is a company XYZ, they are coming out with a mobile SOC. They are coming out with what? Mobile SOC chip. Now this chip, if they come out during 2023 July, okay, and the same product they come up with in 2024, uh, let's say March where do they have better sales i mean when do they have better sales assuming that there are also competitors who are coming up with similar features there will be if xyz is there there will be another abcd company who will also come out with a mobile phone with similar kind of features now when do you think they should come out earlier or later where, where do they stand good chance of making a good revenue out of it? so it's always earlier the better it is because they get um, this much market time right i mean nine months by the time you reach march that phone may become kind of outdated the features may become outdated and there might be new phones with better features so always earlier you come into the market better it is so that is where one of the important things in the whole vlsa design flow is the functional verification the vlsa design flow has an important step called as functional verification and functional verification is one of the things that takes a significant amount of time. Now, what is that uh, functional verification can be divided into, the functional verification time can be divided into two parts. The time taken to set up this page, plus time taken to develop test cases and debug those test cases, debug those and do coverage closure. These are the two aspects. What UVM does is, Time taken to set up test bench is also significantly reduced because why it is reduced can someone tell me in UVM how does the time taken to set up test bench is reduced can someone tell me Because we'll simply inherit the classes and we don't need to create from scratch. Because 
because we are already using the pre-implemented classes. See, driver is pre-implemented. If you go here, already UVM driver is implemented, which comes with some, some pre-implemented functionality. If you open this, it already has some functionality. We just have to use it and develop our own driver. If I want to develop a monitor, I don't need to develop from class UVM, a class monitor. I can reuse this class and implement my own monitor. So because of that, the overall time taken to set up a test bench is significantly reduced compared to system area. Now, since we are using the same kind of a methodology, a very well-defined methodology, even time taken to develop the test cases and debug the test cases also reduced significantly. I mean, when you move from SV to UVM, this is also reduced, this also reduced. So combinedly what happens is in the same time, in let's say in three months time, you can do a lot more using UVM compared to system webinar. So in UVM, you can do a lot more things compared to what you can do in three months in, uh, using system webinar. Next. Uh, next, then comes the drawback part. What is the problem with uh, prefabricated houses? It may, even to do the same work, you may have to spend more money because you have to purchase the prefabricated houses. This problem will not be there in UVM. This, this, not, this problem won't be there in UVM. Okay. Why? Because UVM is open source. Means you don't have to give, uh, spend any money, let's say to purchase this, to use these files or to, uh, to purchase this code. I mean, to get this code, I don't need to pay money to anyone. Because of that, I don't have this drawback at all. I only have advantages. When I move to UVM, everything is advantage. There is no negative or there is no drawback of moving to UVM. I hope everyone has understood why we are doing UVM. Basically, the whole idea of UVM is doing more things at the same time. It's the motivation. What is the motivation? Doing more things in the same time. Okay. Next. Uh, the best example is what? Best example for this prefabricated house is what? Right now in Bangalore, you see metro construction is happening. So you see what they do? They bring the free free prefabricated structures and then they just construct the metro line right somewhere they have been constructed and they just bring it they just assemble and they make the that uh, the track the same similar way uvm also works next uh, next comes how to use UVM. basically uvm is no different from system All that you have to do is when you have to use UVM, there will be one file called as UVM package. You see one file, what is the name of name you see here? UVM underscore package. This is the system verilog package I'm talking about. You see in system verilog we discussed something called as packages. If you open that package, there will be a package definition. See, package, UVM package. What is that? Anytime you want to use UVM, you, you have to first do something called as P include uvm package dot sv then you have to import uvm package star these are the two things you have to do anytime anytime you want to use uvm these are the two things you need to do you need to include the uvm package file then you, then you need to import everything that is part of uvm package into your test bench environment so what when you import what happens everything here gets imported so this has got all the DPI definitions, base class definitions, DAB definitions, TLM1 definitions, component definitions, sequence definitions, everything becomes part of my test bench uh, definition. I mean, part becomes part of the test bench. I can use anything inside the test bench. So to learn more about this, we will be developing a test bench. During that time, you will understand how this include happens, how this import happens, then how do we use those UVM base classes to develop our test bench components? we'll learn as we go forward. I hope everyone has understood the, the three primary questions. What are the three important questions we are discussing? What is UVM? Why UVM is required? And how to use UVM? So now let's move to the next 
part of our discussion. Uh, the very whenever you are learning UVM, you should be telling yourself UVM is not easy to learn. I will give you a simple example also. Let's say if it took system where log, it takes, let's say it took you nine to 10 weeks to gain perfection. All it takes is UVM, it takes, at least from a fresher perspective, it takes three to four weeks to gain perfection. You may say it is more complex, it should take more time. Why it's taking less time? Because we don't have to learn diverse set of things. We don't have to learn a lot of things. In system with log, if you see the learning starts from object-oriented programming, then arrays, different types of arrays, the data types, the interprocess synchronization, uh, then it goes to coverage, then it goes to assertions. The list doesn't stop actually. Scheduling semantics, the DPI, array methods. The list is very big, fourth join. Everything you have to learn, a big list. Here, there is not really much to learn. What is there is, you have to understand UVM base classes. The concept of faces concept of uh, reporting, concept of objections, the factory, okay, databases and sequences, sequences. Mostly this completes almost 60 to 70% of UVM. Because you have already learned the required fundamental things in system with love. You don't have to redo them in UVM. You have to learn the very UVM specific things, which are not very complex actually. When I say UVM easy to learn, it is actually easy to learn. Okay. Uh, so just that you have to tell to yourself that it is easy to learn. If you come with the mindset that UVM is very complex, I cannot learn, it will be very complex. Okay. So please always learn with the attitude that thinking that it is easy to learn and I can gain the perfection in three to four weeks. Uh, no, it is UVM is developed by collaboration by Mentor, Synopsis and Cadence. These three companies together develop the UVM. UVM can be used with any of the simulation tools. UVM can be used with any of the simulation tools. And UVM is essentially consists of system wedlock based classes. What I'm telling is UVM is no different from system wedlock. It's just that it is an advanced level of implementation of the system wedlock where already some classes are implemented for you. You just need to use those classes to develop the test page. Next, how UVM evolved? Nick, is, it the, is, is the UVM the first methodology to be there in the world? No. Till, let's go back to the background. Uh, till 1990s, verification was done using Verilog. If you go to, let's say, around 1985, someone who is working in, let's say, TA, or some other company, let's say Intel. If you ask them which language did they use to do the verification, they would have mostly used very large. Because back in 1980s, designs were simpler. So since designs were simpler, you could just manage, you could do the verification very long. And that time, there was not such a strict timelines, like they could take a product and they could come out in one, two years also. There was not so much competition. I mean, Whatever companies you see, let's say Qualcomm, NVIDIA, probably AMD, probably back then they didn't exist to my knowledge. So there was not so much competition. So they were okay to release the product in one to two years and that was very much manageable with very long. Now later what happened, the design complexity increased. Then more competition. That means what you have to come, you have to do the verification, you have to complete the product verification quickly and you have to come out with the product quickly. Uh, and that is uh, on top of increasing complexity. So then what happened, Verilog became a bottleneck in the verification process. So why it became a bottleneck? Because Verilog was actually developed for a design purpose, not from a verification standpoint. Okay, uh, that is where they introduced uh, object-oriented programming. So the object-oriented programming based hardware verification languages evolved in late 1990s. What are the languages that evolved? 
Vera, Specmany. These are the two languages that were uh, quite famous during 2000-2010 time frame. If you go to go back to 2000, which language was there? Fichte Verlag was not there at the time. Okay, around this time, people were using Vera and Specmany. Then what happened? Then IEEE, you know, right, the standards mm -hmm. committee uh, came with a standard called as IEEE 1800 for system area. Then EDI companies developed HVL methodologies to promote their tools. They wanted to promote their tools. So what EDI companies did? They started developing their own methodologies. So what is that they, they did is they developed some base classes which people can use to set up the test bench. It's like they started behaving like the companies right i told you prefabricated company they will sell uh, driver they will sell monitor they will sell coverage they will sell uh, uh, ref scoreboard you just have to purchase it and customize it for your requirement for, customize it for your requirement then you put together everything it makes the test bench okay what they started doing they didn't sell you they just gave you for free why they gave you for free if they if you use their Thing, you will have to use their simulation tools. So that is where they will make the money. So it enabled developing base classes which can be used in every test bench setup. It saves the time in developing test benches. So various methodologies happened. RVM, ERM, AVM, VMM, OVM, UVM. So finally companies thought, see why everyone is coming up with their own methodology and it is kind of uh, it is not solving the problem. See, the whole idea of methodology was what? To have a common set of steps that everyone can follow. Now, what happened? Mentor was coming up with their own methodology. Cadence was coming up with their own methodology. Synopsis was coming up with their own methodology. So, it was creating a more of a problem, right? Because if company is using this, for them to move to this, they have to learn again. For them to move to this, they have to learn this again. Then, they Three of them came together and they said, why don't we merge everything into one methodology and release it? That combined methodology is called as UVM, which is Universal Verification Methodology. What is Universal Verification Methodology? It is a super set of all above methodology. It has a lot of concepts taken from ERM. So ERM is a very powerful methodology. Actually. Among all these things, ERM was very powerful and UVM is completely taken from ERM. E stands for E reference methodology. It is based on Specmany and it was developed by Cadence. Uh, not Cadence exactly. Someone developed the Cadence purchased that company. So this is about uh, how the UVM has evolved. Uh, I was telling you uh, what is the need for methodology. Let's do one thing before we get into the need for methodology. Let us uh, understand how to set up, how to develop a test page using UVM. Let's directly jump into the practical aspect. Uh, I will be taking one simple example here. If you remember, a lot of you have done Verilog and we have you have done System Verilog. Can you tell me what is one common project we did in both System Verilog and uh, UVM? Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. In Verilog and System Verilog, we did one common project. What is that common project? It was memory, right? In Verilog, what did we do? We took same memory, uh, memory design coding using Verilog and test bench using Verilog. In system Verilog, we didn't do design because already it was there in Verilog. Memory test bench using system Verilog. In UVM also, we'll do the same thing. We'll take memory test bench using UVM. Why we are taking memory? We are taking memory because uh, it is very easy to understand memory. It is easy to understand memory and it is easy to develop the code of the memory. Okay, so we will be taking this example to learn UVM. The whole idea is to get familiar with the UVM constructs.
Okay. Uh, so I so we'll be taking memory test bench example, and uh, that will be developing using UV. So please, everyone, please follow this. Uh, the freshers who are attending this course, I mean the people who are from uh, the, our course, right? The functional verification for freshers course. If you can develop, I, let me tell you one statement. Over next three four weeks, you will learn a lot of things. But if you can learn how to develop memory test bench using UVM, I can tell you that you are seventy percent of UVM course is complete. Whatever I'm going to do in next two hours or one hour, it, I can finish it in one hour. If you learn it, your 70% is complete. So let us now directly start off with the memory test bench development using UVM. So why I'm taking this is you are fresh with this thing, right? I mean, probably a few weeks back you have already done this. Few weeks back, you already learned how to develop memory test bench using UVM. So now, if you when I'm doing this, you just need to correlate and you need to understand how the time gets reduced and how the verification process gets improved by moving to UVM. So Memory test bench. Memory test bench. Uh, I go to memory test bench. First thing I'm going to do is copy the memory file. So somewhere in my here itself, memory test bench may be there. Memory test bench. Memory test bench is somewhere there. I just copy memory. I'm copying memory only. Okay, I'm not copying any other test bench files. Uh, only other thing I'm going to copy is run dot do. A file which tells what all steps I have to run. Uh, first one is the compilation. Second one is elaboration. Third one is simulation. Uh, anytime you run UVM based code, let's say I'm developing a top test page.sv. Module, top test page, and module. What is the first thing you have to do is to run any UVM code. I told you, I gave you a few guidelines. What is the, I told you that you have to do these two lines. Include the UVM package, import UVM package. I'm including the UVM package and I'm importing the UVM package. So inside module TV. So this will make sure that all UVM class definitions will be available. Tell me, is it in the global scope or is it in the module scope? This import is is it happening in global scope? Global, global. Is this 
global scope or module scope? Global scope. And global scope, right? That means what the definitions will be available throughout the test bench environment. These definitions are available in entire test bench. Now, if it is available, that means it will be available inside this also, everywhere it will be available. The very first thing in any UVM test bench you have to do is something called as initial begin end run underscore test. And we have to pass a test as an argument. Let's say mem based test, mem test or anything, whatever you want to name it. Let's say mem based test, I'll call it as. All UVM test benches has this compulsory code. What does this do is you are telling that run the test. Run the test, right? That's what you are telling. See, instead of telling they could have told run the test, which is better. Then. Run the test battery is better or run underscore test is better. So that's why they chose the name run underscore test. What they are telling, which test? Now tell me. Which test that is passed in the brackets? mem based test they are telling that run the test which test mem based test what this will do is it will automatically start doing everything you don't user don't have to do anything once the user has developed once user has developed test bench environment has developed the test bench code the run test will do everything does everything automatically that is very very important this is basic about what one test does. Uh, now, without defining what is mem-based test, is it going to work? Can you tell me? Let's say I am calling run test and in that I am telling that run mem-based test. Without defining what is mem-based test, will my code is going to work? It is not going to work, right? Because tool doesn't know what is mem-based test. So I need to define what is mem-based test. Generally, you know that we do not develop everything in one place. Do we develop everything in one place? No, right? We develop different things into different files. Like for example, in system log, we develop BFM into a separate file, generator into a separate file, monitor into a separate file. The same way, sh tell me, shall I develop mem-based test in this file or in different files? What would be logically make more sense? I should develop in a different file. That different file is called as test lib dot test. Because we are developing test cases. What is test lib means what library? A place where you develop all the test cases is called as test library. So what is test library? It, it, place where we develop all the test cases it's called as test link so how do you what, what do you think test case should be should it be a module or should it be a class or should it be an interface if i show you this should it be a module should it be a class or should it be an interface can you tell me you know that it's a class, right? Everything that you develop in a test bench is a class. So, what it should be class. So, what is the name of the class? Can you tell me what is the name of the class I want to develop? Mm -hmm. It is mem based test. So, this is where comes the concept of UVM. Now, in UVM, as I told you, it provides, it comes with pre implemented classes. If you go to the components, UVM already has something called as UVM underscore test where the UVM test class is already defined. So the point is what? It's already defined. Use this, create your own test. So how do you create this? What is this relation is called as the one I'm showing in, in system where like, what is it called as? If I show arrow like this, if I draw arrow like this from here to here, what is that relation is called as inheritance? By inheritance, what happens, whatever that is present in test becomes part of my mem-based test. It all becomes part of my mem-based test. So all I have to do is 
mem based test extends UVM test and yes. mem based test extends UVM test. Uh, okay, so by doing that, what I'm doing, whatever is part of UVM test, that becomes part of my mem based test. After that, what do you do? You in UVM, I mean, there are few few things I'm going to do. They are a bit new to you, but eventually you'll get used to it. Okay. Uh, it's like system headlock. When you started system headlock, things were new to you. Even in new year, to develop any class, there are few guidelines you have to follow. I mean, to develop any component, UVM, to develop any component, few guidelines need to be followed. First thing is, Define the class by extending from base class, UVM base class. Next, register the class to the factory. What exactly is factory? What is mean by registration? I'll explain as we go forward. Okay. Then. Uh, declare all the class properties. Next, define function. Define function. Then implement various cases of various methods. but faces various methods of the class these are the guidelines we have to follow how many guidelines are there totally totally how many guidelines are there five guidelines are there first is what define a class by extending from uvm base class so what is the uvm base class here uvm test what was the second guideline? Tell me. What was the second guideline? Actually, this is uh, the second thing. Actually, this could be the second thing. Declare all the class properties. Inside mem based test, what will be there? Uh, basically, this is how the structure will look like. I'm trying to develop this kind of you see, I'm trying to develop this kind of architecture. Uh, whereas this is the memory. This is my top TV, top module. Below top module, there will be UVM root. Below root, test will be there. Below test, environment will be there. Below environment, agent will be there. Below agent, all the companies will be there. So we are going to develop this kind of structure. Have you all understood? Let me write it down in the notes. What is the structure that is followed in UVM is UVM test based structure will be. Or before we do that, let's do let's do one thing. System will not test based structure. Let's draw. I think that will be that will make it easy. In system will not the top module. Below top module, what will be there? Program block. Below program block, environment will be there. Below that, you will have sub environments, reference model, and checker. Below sub environment, you will have BFM, generator, monitor, and coverage. This is the structure that we follow in system well Is everyone familiar with this structure? Are you all clear with this structure? How a system well based test bench structure looks like? Is everyone clear with this structure?
So when you come to UVM, the structure will be similar but not same. Okay, understand it is similar but not same. So what does it mean is it is going to have top module will be same. So the program will be replaced with something called as UVM root and below UVM root you will have a UVM desktop. Understand? The structure is getting a little bit different. Whatever was program, whatever was program, it is getting replaced with root and test. Then below desktop, we have environment. The sub environment is replaced with agent. Sub environment is replaced with agent. Reference model is replaced with what? Scoreboard. Checker, you can call it as checker or comparator. BFM is replaced with what? Driver. Generator is replaced with what? Sequencer. That's all. This is how the structure looks like. Has everyone understood how UVM test bench structure looks like? Has everyone understood? Uh, no, sir. Can you please explain once again? No, what is that you didn't understood? Please tell me. Uh, uh, how to map it to the SV? No, no, no. See, I'm telling you what is so complex. I'm telling pro whatever is program is getting replaced with another two hierarchies. Root and test of. What exactly is root? What exactly is test of? We'll discuss as we go forward. Ah, okay. 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 Now, what else you don't understand? I told you already BFM replaced with driver, generator replaced with sequencer, sub environment is replaced with agent. Except for this, I don't see any other confusion point at all. It's just that below in system LR, below top module, you have program. Instead of program, below top module, you keep UVM root. Below root, there will be test of. Below test of, there will be any Okay. 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 Next question. Someone asked a question. Is UVM root imaginary here? Is UVM root imaginary here? The answer is no. It, it actually exists. It exists. When we call run test, it gets created. What happens when I'm calling here run test? It is that we are calling run test uh, in the top TV. Here, when I call run test, uh, when you go to source code, uh, globals, somewhere, uh, AS UVM globals, run test will be there here. So this is the global definition. See, you are calling run test. This is run test is defined in defined in UVM global scope. I mean outs that is the global scope outside every class it is defined. That is UVM globals. So what does this definition do is it instantiates UVM root as a top. You see root is instantiated when you call run test it is actually calling y4 It is same as this because you're calling the task, it's same as this one. So here you pass the test name, whatever test name you, you ran, you just pass that. It is exactly doing that. Now, do you see the UVM root getting instantiated? Everyone? So, one question How is this run yeah. test uh, global scope? Run test is global scope because it is defined outside everything. There is, it is not part of any class or module. It is a file where there is no class. It is defined in a global scope. Means if you define a thing outside a module and outside a class, it is called as global scope. For example, this is a module. This is kept outside the module. So that means what you are doing is in the global scope. Yes. Okay. So 
you understood what is the significance of calling run test run test essentially calls this part of it. what it does it creates uvm root as a top and it creates that and then it calls one more method inside inside it there is a method called as run test it is calling the uvm root run test that run test actually creates a hierarchy called as run test creates a hierarchy called as UVM test of this is nothing but the test case instance of the test case we are running. Let's say what is the instance, what exactly does it mean if I am running a memory write read test. So inside UVM root it would be instantiated as UVM test of. So inside the class UVM root this gets created like this. Have you understood? Inside our root class, this gets instantiated as UVM test. So, below top module, what will be there? What is the instance of UVM root? What is the name of, instance name of the uh, UVM root? Can someone tell me? It is top. Top is the instance name. You remember? Here it is top. UVM root is instantiated as top. Next. And uh, the test is instantiated as what? UVM test top. Below test top, environment will be there. Below environment, what will be there? Agent. See, like in system log, we had sub environment, reference model, and checker. Here it will be agent. Whatever is sub environment, it is called as agent in UVM. Reference model is called as scoreboard. Below agent, you have driver, sequencer, monitoring coverage. Now, has everyone understood this? Uh, one question, one more question, sir, about this. Why do we require a run test method to make a hierarchy? We are already making it like, uh, 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 we are already using the inheritance and uh, doing the class, in uh, defining things in class, right? See, what run test does is, it's, it does everything. Uh, I'll give you an example of what run test will do. Run test analogy. Like, take an example of a factory. The factory is not like one machine, right? It has got many machines. Let's say this is a big factory we are talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. Manufacturing factory. It has got many machines. Below each machine, there are, let's say, sub missions are there somewhere. Below each mission, let's say, some more missions are there. Okay. What run test will do is, if you just start the process here, it will automatically take care of everything. What is meant by everything? Creating this elements, creating these components, connecting those components with each other and start their functionality also. Everything will happen automatically if you just call the run test. You are telling run the test, everything it will do. In system wedlock, it doesn't work this way. In system wedlock, you have to go and manually create this thing. You have to create this. You have to connect them using mailbox. Then you have to call run method. Like what do we do in the in system wedlock, what we used to do? If there is a class uh, mem environment. It has got uh, mem bfm as bfm. Mem generator as generator. We used to write task run, generate task. Then we used to do fork join bfm dot run generator dot run. This is not required in UV. Because this happens automatically. Mm -hmm. That is what run test does. What run test will do is, it will automatically, it knows the structure. It will do everything in a step-by-step -step manner without user having to do anything. User just has to develop the test bench components and instantiate them. Rest all things run test will do. Run test should not be related to the inheritance because inheritance is different, run test is different. What is run test is being used for? Run test is being used to create the top and to run the test case. 
Is that clear to you? Now it is clear. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, any other questions? So, so we are we are calling the run test and we are passing the test name here. Okay. Uh, now inside this test, inside the test, what is there as per our hierarchy? What is there below the test? Can you tell me? Below the test, you have to look at line number ninety-four to hundred. Below ninety-four to hundred, what is there below the test? Environment, right? And you know how you instantiate environment. I am not going to teach all those things because you should be familiar with all those things in system level. Okay, this is the properties. This is the second point. We were going back to our discussion. What were the few things? Define the class by extending UVM base class. Declare all the class properties. What is the third thing we have to do? We have to register the class to the factory. See, this is new to you. I, I, you don't. You, this is probably many of you hearing for the first time. Don't worry. It is not a very complex concept. You will learn as we go forward. So let's do. What does it mean? It is called as UVM component utils mem base test. This is called as factory registration. Now, what exactly is factory registration? I will explain you. The next thing you do is what is the next thing in our list? Can you tell me? Once you register class to the factory, what is the next thing you do? You have to create the defined function new. Define function new. I have to define function new. In function, the only difference here is that only difference here is that in system error generally you don't keep many times you don't need you don't need to keep the argument here in system UVM you have to keep compulsorily two arguments string main UVM component what is name and parent let me just give you a brief what is the significance of this for every component you create in UVM for every component you create UVM for every component we create we we give name and the parent we tell who is the parent of that component what is the advantage of this is it helps in developing the entire test bench hierarchy developing entire test bench hierarchy what does it mean let's understand through a simple analogy let's take an example of a, a combined family of 50 members let's say there are four to five generations out there four to five generations of people is making up let's say 50 members of the combined family if for, for every member in the family for every member in family okay if i tell if I tell the name of the person, if I tell one name of the person, and who is the parents, parents of the person. With these two details, with these two details, can we build the family tree? Can we come up with family tree? Tell me. If I just tell the name of the person and who are the parents of the person, can I come up with the family tree? We can come up with the family tree, right? Because you you know that for this person, the parent is this. And since for him also, someone would have told, he is my father, you can come up with this tree. Like that, finally, you would be able to come up with the family tree. Okay. 
like this. I mean, where you know who is where. I mean, you know who is the eldest, who is the youngest, who is in between. All that you will be able to do. The similarly, in UVM also, if you tell the name, if you tell the parent, my UVM will be able to build the test page structure like this. This is the test top. This is the environment. These are the agents. This is the driver. This is the sequencer. Like that, it can build this test page structure. If you just tell the name and the parent, you don't need to tell anything. I don't need to tell my grandfather is this person. I don't need to tell my son is this person. I just need to tell my name is Srinivas and my father name is this person. So when I like that, every all the all the members in the family, if they tell, you can come up with the family tree. Same way in UVM also. If you just give a name and parent, that's the reason we give name and parent to each component and as a basic requirement you have to compulsory do this this is what is making it happen this super dot new is what is making that family tree possible because you are calling super dot new the test bench structure is getting developed because of it. once it is done that is the fourth step what is the fifth step tell me what was the fifth step after define function new? What is the fifth, fifth step? The next step is basically implement various methods of the class. I mean, in UVM, you will see that going forward, you will see that I mean, there are various methods like build phase, connect phase, end of elaboration phase, start of simulation phase, run phase, extract phase, check phase, report phase. There are various methods. How many methods do you see? These are all the methods. Methods means what? Either task or functions. Uh, run phase is the only task here. Run phase is the only task. Everything else is a function. Run phase is the only task and everything else you see is a function. So all these phases or some of these phases needs to be implemented. That is what I mean by the fifth step. If you see, I, I was telling you, implement various methods of the class. Okay. So there are some guidelines what to do. Uh, so in function void build phase, UVM phase, phase, end function. Okay. Here what you do is create your children. It means what? Allocate memory. Allocate memory. Your children. Tell me. For mem based test, who is the child? For mem based test, as you see here, for mem mem based test, who is the child? Environment is the child. So we have to do env equal to mu of. For what all arguments you have to give? As per our prior understanding, whenever you create something, what are the two things we need to pass? You need to give a name to it and you need to tell who is the parent. What is the name? We will give the same name as the instance. See, instance is env, so I will give the same. And tell me who is the parent for environment? Who is the parent for environment? Mem env. No, no. For environment, the parent is mem based test. Right? To refer to mem based test, we don't refer as mem based test because it's a handle. See, mem based test is a class. To refer to that, we refer to it as this. Understand? This refers to the instance of mem based test. Did everyone understood how we passed the name and the parent? Has everyone understood? So, what do you do in the build phase? You create your children. Next. The next phase is called as connect phase. 
once you are done with build phase, the next phase is called as connect phase. So what do you think you should do in the connect phase? Tell me. I will give you a simple analogy. Okay. Let's say I have three children. A, B, C. During build phase, I create them. During connect phase, I connect them. I tell them he is your brother, he is your, she is your sister. That connections I do. So what do you think I should do in the connect phase? I will connect the components below me. But you see test case has only one child. Let's say I have only one child. Do I, do I need to connect them, connect him with anyone? Assume I have only one child. Do I need to do any connections below me? No, right? Whereas if I have two children or three children, then I need to connect them. I need to tell this is how you two are related. This is how you two are related. Okay. Uh, so here, no need of connect this. No need of If you don't want to do anything, better don't code it at all. Because this is by default present as empty method only. If you just leave it empty also, even if you don't code it also, same. Point is, if you don't have to implement any functionality, no need to code. Because by default, what you get from the base class is already having an empty method. By default, already it has got an empty method. This was, this was already there. Where? in the UVM test. So there is no point uh, again coding the same thing and leaving it empty. So rather you don't do it at all. Have you all understood what is meant by connect face? Did you understood why we don't need connect face here? Can someone tell me why we don't need connect face in test case? Connect phase, uh, sorry, the test has only one child. If test has only one child, there is nothing to connect, right? If I have only one child, he doesn't need to be connected to anyone. Okay. But now you may ask, how about connecting to me? We both are connected. He knows that I am the I am his parent. So we are we both are connected, but he doesn't have any siblings to connect. So hence, connect phase is not required. Now, what is the phase after connect phase? Can you tell me? What is the next phase after connect phase? End of elaboration phase. The next phase after connect phase is what? End of elaboration phase. You copy the same code, paste it here, just replace it with end of elaboration phase. What do we do in end of elaboration phase? Is by this time, by the time you reach here, by by this time, test bench is created and connect connections are done. Do you agree with that? By the time you reach, by the time you reach end of elaboration phase, all the test bench components are created and all the connections are done. Do you agree with that? So here what you can do is any final changes to the test bench. I mean any modifications to the test bench, to the test bench or any uh, print the test bench structure kind of things you can do. These kind of things you can do in the end of elaboration test. I will show you simply how do we do UVM top print topology. It, what this will do is this will print the test page topology. UVM top is the topmost thing in that you are telling that print the topology. I will stop here. Uh, other There are other things you can do, of course. Run startup simulation phase, run phase, extract phase, check phase, report phase, everything we can do. For now, let's not go into those methods. Because if I keep developing like that, lot of things I need to develop. So what we will do is, we will now implement the one last class called as mem environment. Environment.sv. Again, what are the five guidelines we discussed in developing any component? These guidelines. Copy this. 
Look here. First, what is the first guideline? As per the first guideline, I have to write mem environment extends UBM environment. Yes. What is the second guideline? Mem, what are the properties? What are below mem properties? As per our hierarchy, what do you think is below uh, environment? Can you tell me below environment what should be there? As per the UVM test bench hierarchy, what should be there below UVM environment? Agent should be there. Below UVM environment, agent should be there. So, mem agent. Clear, right? Then. What is the third thing? Tell me. What is the third thing I am supposed to do? Now you may say where is scoreboard and where is checker. I am not doing right now. If you want, you could have done mem scoreboard. I could have written mem scoreboard and all that. But for now, I am trying to keep the my environment simple. Okay. Now, what is the next step? Tell me. Once you have declared the mem agent, what is the next step? Factory registration. How do you do factory registration? Copy this line. Paste it here. Mail menu Once the factory registration is done, what is the next step? Can you tell me? registration is done what is the next step can you tell me what is the next step you have to do the constructor that is function view again I can take it from by two. Once it is done, what is the next step? Implement various methods. What are the various methods? Again, I can take this kind of code. What do you do in the build phase? Y three. I have to write agent equal to new of agent and this. Okay, for now, what I will do is I'll stop here because I mean, I'll stop the developing, developing the code here because otherwise, they'll, uh, let me just develop mem agent and then stop here. Mem agent dot sp. I'm developing mem agent. I'll cop I can copy the same code exactly. Same code. I'm going by the same guidelines as what we developed. Environment I'll replace with what? Agent. 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 Okay, so this agent will not be there. This is the entire code. So now what I am going to do is whatever files I have coded, I am just going to include them here. I am going to pick include what is the first file mem agent.sp. Environment. Test library That's all. See, I have coded mem agent, I have coded mem environment, I have coded test library. I am including all of them into my top PG. Now I can run this code. Run this. I have to invoke my tool. All I have to do is, I have already created one uh, file called as run.do. You see, I have already created run.do where I am compiling I need to include the path where the UVM source code is present. See, this is where the UVM source code is present. Because otherwise, it doesn't know where to look for this file. See, I'm including this file, right? UVM package. 
where to find uvm package it doesn't know so i have to tell that include directory where that uvm package is present then i'm compiling uh, this part i will explain you what is this here instead of app test i have to pass main base test i need to tell which test name i'm running now since you may ask you are already doing it here right you are telling which test to run if that is the case then this is not required. Now, this is a kind of a requirement. Whenever you run UVM code in QuestaSim, you have to pass the DPI path. You have to tell hyphen SVD, you have to give this kind of path. Okay, this is a compulsory requirement whenever you run any UVM code with uh, QuestaSim. And this is the topmost module name. Don't do optimization and suppress option is there. Now, if I run this, If you see now, what you will notice here is, can you see the test bin structure getting printed here? Can you see the test bin structure? What is in the top? You, see, you have to see this, this side. You have got okay test top below test top you have any environment below environment you have agent uh, now below agent what do you generally have below agent what do you generally have let's do that part and we'll end the session for today below agent you have got mem driver call it as brv mem sequencer you call it as sequencer now, as you know, what do you do in the build phase? You create your children. So for mem agent, who are the children? For mem agent, who are the children? Driver and sequencer are the children. So I create those driver and sequencer. BRV equal to mu of BRV. And this, see, all that I'm doing is I'm giving a name and telling with a parent. Same way for sequencer. I'm telling name is SQR and parent. Now, do, now tell me, do I need connect face? Can you tell me, do I need connect face here? Why do I need connect face? I have two children. I need to connect if i have two children i need to connect them right how they are connected to each other who are my two children driver and sequencer are my two children i need to connect them see uvm has a way of connection called as called as plm port 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 connection sequence item port connect sequencer dot sequence item export i'm doing the connection I'm doing the connection. Uh, okay, now what exactly is sequence item port? What exactly is sequence item export? I will explain you. For now, just sim in, to keep it simple, just understand that, let us say we are importing crude oil from Russia. So Russia has a port, one port. Let's say India is importing. So it has got one export. So both of them, both of these things are being connected. It's like telling Russia dot port connected to India dot export that connection we are established one port is connected to one export the only difference is there they were sending crude oil in our case we are sending transactions from one port to other port we are sending the transaction which transactions we are sending memory transactions we are sending so I will just uh, code what is mem driver again the same similar guidelines will come class mem driver extends uvm driver mem transaction 
you need to parameterize with mem transaction uh, next register i mean uh, register to the factory uvm component utils mem driver then you have to define function new okay i will not code anything i mean not coding anything uh, right now okay because i don't want to complete the entire test page today itself we'll keep the remaining things for next session so for my idea is just to develop a basic structure so that you understand what is happening mem sequencer dot test i can develop in the same manner exactly the same manner instead of drb it becomes sequencer and sequencer Uh, that's all. Uh, only one thing I need to develop is mem transaction. It's like I was developing mem driver and mem BFM and mem generator. In system where lag also you do, right? Only thing additionally we are doing is we are extending from a base class so that the common functionality from the UVM sequencer comes and I don't have to develop everything from scratch because the common functionality that is present in sequencer automatically comes to me. Only additional thing I have to define is mem transaction dot SP. So class mem transaction extends uvm sequence item end class you can declare rand bit 31 down to 0 address you remember right this is what we would have done in uh, uv system mm -hmm. log also and right read when you register to the factory uvm object utils mem transaction and then you define function new just we need to understand one thing that for transaction is not same as components the transaction is an object what is meant by that is transaction is not like a driver sequencer uh, because it gets created and it gets consumed so so it is a type of object so you have to use the keyword object utils instead of component utils and this will not have any parent. The object will not have a parent. Because there is no parent, I should not pass parent. For now, this much is sufficient. What I will do is, I will go to the top CV. Whatever new things I have coded. Let me just include. Driver. Let me run this. You see, as you develop the structure, as you see earlier, this was only showing. If you remember, only this much was showing. If you just go back up. Now you see the entire test bench structure is showing. Can you see below test stop what is there? As per this structure, what do you see below test stop? What do you see below the test stop? Environment. Uh, what is there below environment? Agent. Below agent, what do you see? driver and sequencer okay so this structure is getting printed because we called one line what is that one one line we did we said this line let's talk print topology just because we did this just because we called that it is printing the test print structure okay uh, so this is a brief about the uvm test bench uh, i know you have many questions i can list on those questions also i mean you may be wondering what is this factory registration uh, why you are calling super dot new uh, what is uh, this print topology does lot of such questions are there they will all be clear because not everything can be learned in two hours of time so few questions you keep a note and see how learning happens at times you just have to memorize 
T. When I said you have to do factory registration, you have to, for today, you have to agree and do that. Instead of trying to decode what is UVM component details, better to do it today. In the next sessions, I will explain what exactly is component, uh, component utils means, what is meant by factory, what is meant by registration. Everything I will explain as we go forward. So, we will stop the session here. For now, the goal would be, I want you to take this memory example, uh, develop the test page till this point. Before we meet on next for, for before the next session, before the next session, I want you to download the entire test page till this point. Whatever I have done, this video will be shared with you, uh, and you can refer to that video and you can develop it. Okay, any questions before we end the session? UVM files, how to download UVM files, you just have to go to UVM Accelera. Just type UVM Accelera in Google. You'll get this link. You go here and you download whatever you want from here. Here you can download. Let's say 1.2. You can see here that uh, class library code this you download there if you download you inside that you will see the source code okay uh, any other questions okay for everyone uh, i want to tell you one thing i don't want to keep it a motivation lecture or anything uh, my prior observation with the freshers has been that they expect the trainer i mean our mentor to teach everything type c type l type s uh, type U, V, M, driver, it is not going to happen. You are not going to learn anything out of it. You have to come out of that comfort zone. You need to come out of that comfort zone and you should start doing everything yourself. Please do not expect dictation sessions. Please do not expect dictation sessions. Rather, it should be you have tried something, you are stuck somewhere, you ask trainer for the support. Because you are in the final leg of the training where you are almost going to complete. After this, you will do project, right? So by now, you should be doing the things yourself. Okay. Uh, any questions you have before we end the session? Okay. Thank you, everyone.